What's up, Black Sheep Church? It's been a long day, I'm telling you. <clears throat> Busy one for sure. Um, tonight we are going to be talking about the cost of being a disciple. Uh, as you can see, we are not at the park. There's currently a tornado warning for where we're at. So if you see things starting to fly around back there, please tell me so we can run. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Exactly, yeah. We are, we are currently at uh, Lisa's house doing service. So, you know, if things seem a little bit not like they normally were for a minute, it's just because today's been crazy. Like I said, the storms, the tornadoes. Uh, Dorothy said she's going to stop by later. We'll see. But for now, we're going to start with some worship. Um, yeah, pay attention. I could use a little worship right now. Right. All right, guys. Be right back. Okay. So listen to Lisa. She, she knows she's working on She doesn't have to be on there. What's she going to do when I talk to her later about stuff, though? It's cool. You look at me. See this? World class beard. Sorry. sorry.
Let us pray. Father, we pray that you be with us tonight, that you would guide, that you would watch over us, lead us, Lord, um, love us, uh, be with us in our hearts, take any places, any strongholds that we have, Lord, and tear down those walls, um, bring us closer to you and your love, Father. Open our, our ears and our hearts to this message tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the cost of being a disciple. Before we get to that. Um, there's going to be some things changing. Uh, not, not drastic changes, but you're going to notice some things. I am, I am pulled, I am, I can't even speak. Hold on a second. Okay. <clears throat> Let's try that again. I'm pulled a thousand different directions right now, right? Um, the Lord has, has graciously brought me some help. Um, Lisa, Minister's Apprentice Lisa here, uh, Pastor Kane in Michigan City, Indiana up there. Um, they, they both have desire to be a part of this family and to um, help lead this church of God's going forward. Um, you are going to be seeing um, more of Lisa uh, in the near future. We're going to work out one of these sermons for her to do. Um, I'm also going to be reaching out to Pastor Kane um, and seeing if maybe he wants to jump in on a Wednesday or Sunday night um, in the next few weeks or something. Uh, so we're going to bring these other people into this here. I want to introduce them to you. I want you to get to know them. Um, I want you to understand that I trust them and that you should be able to also. Uh, they will be working with me in this process. Uh, pastor Kane, of course, has a church um, that he is currently the senior pastor of. Um, so that does need to come first before Black Sheep Church, but I don't think that stands in the way of what we're doing here, though. Um, so uh, definitely uh, we're going to start hooking that up some. Um, F F Fatima, let me, can I ask a question? I just, you put, you put little periods in, you know what I'm saying? You make a comment with a little period. I'm just curious. I, I, I really don't know. Why, why is that? Is that like a placeholder, like attendance, like, hi, I'm here type thing? Or is there something I should know about that? Period, like agreeable. Agreeable. Oh, oh, my 16 year old son just said that's agreeable. Is that right? Like I don't know. Period in my I'm old. <laughs> 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 ah boy <clears throat> so uh i'm i'm going to ask lisa a couple questions here real fast oh, Lord. um yeah i know you were like don't put me on camera but i'm like what are you gonna do when i ask you questions <laughs> so i'm gonna ask her a couple questions um lisa yeah hi tell me yes what would you like the people out there to know about your relationship with God? <laughs> it's imperfect. And um, every day I try to make it better. The one best thing is that he accepts me from where I'm coming from. So even though it's not perfect, he still loves me. And that's better than any relationship I can imagine. Can you give us a time, if you think back, can you give us a time that you can pick out that you were like 100% certain God, this was like a God thing for you? Do you have a testimony about just like even just one thing where, where he like really showed up and you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is God in my life? I'm putting her on the spot, guys. This is great. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I can actually give you multiple responses to that question. But um, one of my most obvious ones is sitting right next to me. Um, and say hello to my daughter, Nicole. Um, so I have something what's called PCOS, which is polycystic ovaries and... I wasn't able to get pregnant and I met my second husband who was quite a few years older than I was and he has this daughter and her name is Nicole and she came into my life. How old were you when you came into my life? 
got so 27 yeah. yeah okay about 30. <laughs> I'm four years older than she is just by four years and um, because of my relationship with Vern her dad I ended up with a beautiful daughter and three amazing outlandish grandchildren and that was a god thing because that was the only way that that was going to happen so <laughs> we have wind chimes here but pastor sam does at his house too so you, yeah, should, be you, used to you should be used to that yes exactly. so um god sent me my second husband and fulfilled my desire for children and that was a god thing that is sun splash beeping in the background we have a water park across our street and that is the alert letting us know that it is all clear of lightning for the next 10 miles oh hallelujah look at that see we're safe guys no tornado no lightning it's all good i didn't say no tornado was oh, coming come on. it just said no lightning, lightning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So how do you see, um, where where do you want your relationship with Black Sheep Church to go? I want to be able to tell the world about Jesus. And I want to be able to do that with this church, with you as the pastor. Because um, today... The song, the new song by Casting Crowns was on the radio. And uh, it starts right here, I believe is what it's called. And Mark Hall, he's the leader of Casting Crowns. He came out and said that, you know, we should we should be taking this song personally because with all the turmoils going on in the world right now, change can happen, but it needs to start right here. And there's a line in in that song that said something about rock star pastors. And as much as I love you, Pastor Sam, you are not a rock star. Amen, sister. <laughs> and I am never so thankful for that because you are just like the average Joe and there's no pretenses and there's no pressure to, you know, be dressed a certain way or to act to a conform certain way. To conform or be denied? To conform um, to what people think a church needs to be. And that's one of the things that attracted me to Black Sheep Church in the first place. So to be able to spread the word of Jesus Christ with the backing of an average Joe, and it just, it, it finally clicked for me. Is there anything the else here. you would like to share with the people before the average Joe selfishly takes this thing back? <laughs> I just want everybody who's listening, everybody that sees this video, you are not alone. God is with you. He will meet you wherever you are. Whatever you're doing, all you have to do is ask him to come into your heart. And he will. And it's amazing how one's life can change when that happens not necessarily for the better but yes definitely for the better in we're the not, long run 100 percent for the better right yes we're not promised an easy life we're promised salvation yeah. and that's that's the big thing so if you feel that you have questions please reach out to either pastor sam or myself we we want heaven to be packed amen amen i don't want to lose anybody there you go. I want everybody to be there. You may now have the... Thank you so yes, much. Yes, you're very welcome. Thank you so much. <sighs> okay. All right, now it's my turn to sweat. <laughs> uh, Fatima. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. I, I, I honestly, I just didn't know. Fatima, that's all. <clears throat> Thank you, Lisa, for sharing. Okay. Uh, that was wonderful. Um, great. I'm sorry, what's that? Was that right? Right. Uh, she said, I simply want you to know that I'm present and in God's community. What's wrong? 
You were wrong. You were wrong. My 16-year-old was wrong? No. Um, it's a good segue, right? Uh, Lisa brought up a great point. Um, guaranteed your life will change when you bow the knee to King Jesus. Um, the question is whether you think um, earthly goods and riches and look at this, oh, thank you. whether earthly goods and riches and status are what you're after or if you're after a real God. Because what is promised is not Amen, Fatima. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read this. We're gonna read it through, and then we'll go we'll go back. Um, the cost of being a disciple, uh, Luke chapter fourteen, um, verse twenty five through thirty three. Here, large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, "If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yet even his own life." He cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able, with 10,000 men, to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off, and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Cannot. Pastor Sam, it's grace. What are you talking about? Lisa's imperfect. You're imperfect. Everyone's imperfect. What are you talking about? Okay, let's, let's walk through this. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brother and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. That is now blowing one time, and it's telling us that there is lightning within 10 miles. <laughs> Hi. Florida's amazing. Florida is amazing. Ain't no storm stopping us. Nope. And yet anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Let's take this last part. Anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. What does this mean? That means Jesus was put on a cross and suffered. He was tortured. He was beat up. He was killed because he loved us. And every day we're called to live a sacrificial life. Every day a true Christian gets up in the morning with the mindset of the kingdom. So I'm here for eternity. I'm not going nowhere. I am immortal. This flesh is mortal, but I am immortal. I will move forward through time for eternity as a child of God. This flesh will perish. This flesh will be revived, sinless, resurrected, made perfect. It will be new. This old flesh will pass away because it's sinful. But in this sinful flesh, as we struggle to know God, and it is a struggle, we wrestle with God. Remember Israel? Israel wrestled with God. He who wrestles with God. So as we wrestle with God, as we figure out our salvation with fear and trembling, we must come back to the fact that we are to love God above all else. If you do not love God above all else, that means you're sinful, which means you need, yeah, imputed righteousness, credited righteousness. 
because I'm imperfect. So by the law standard, um, by the law standard, um, anyone who does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. This does not mean that you actually hate them. This means in comparatively speaking, between the love you have for Christ, for God, and the love you have for those around you, the love you're supposed to have for God is so immense. It is so that the love for those you love the most, those closest to you, should pale in comparison to the love you have for God. So under the law, under the law, this is the requirement. Verse 28, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he, say, if, for if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. I'm too tired to go through that whole thing. I'm just being honest. I'm sinful. I'm, I'm imperfect. It's been... A long day. Sorry. I'm going to jump right to this next one and get right to the point. You guys can thank me later for it. <clears throat> or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming with him with 20,000? So, in case you guys don't know, you stand no chance against God. No matter how much you want to do battle with him, no matter how much you want to be your own God, you can never accomplish it. You are not strong enough in any way, shape, or form to overcome God. Satan believes that he is, which is how we will end up with this battle at the final seven years. Because Satan believes he is strong enough. Uh, you are not strong enough. You cannot do it. Um, God, as we've talked before, until you have bent the knee to King Jesus, there is enmity between you and God. That means you are God's enemy. If you have not bent the knee to King Jesus, you are God's enemy. There is enmity between you. The only way to fix it is to beg his son to stand in your place to accept his punishment as your own. This comes through repentance. This comes through a desire to know God. You cannot beat God. But Pastor Sam, I want to do this and I want to do that. I want things my way. Listen, I want my thing my way. I want things my way all the time. Do you understand? Always. I am selfish. I am self-centered. I am consumed with the things my flesh wants. I, I strive after my own glory. I strive after these worldly things. It takes a choice in my mind to strive after Jesus, to become self-sacrificing, to give up my right to the things this world says I have a right to. <clears throat> what does this mean? This means, listen, you shouldn't abuse anybody. <clears throat> you shouldn't allow someone to abuse you. There's an asterisk. Here's the asterisk. It's a good thing there's a peanut gallery tonight. Otherwise, I'd have had to put some stuff underneath here and yeah, yeah whatever. A whole other story. Anyways, <clears throat> so... Because Jesus suffered for you, he calls you to live a sacrificial life and to suffer for him. He calls you to love him above all else, to love your brother and sister as yourself. Uh, let's not forget that God tells us if you're bringing something to his altar, if you're bringing a gift for him, and your brother or sister has something against you, you are to go and repair that relationship to make good on that wrong before you bring God what's rightfully his. That's how important it is to him. He's saying, listen, guys, stop. If your brother has something against you, I will come second. Matter of fact, you go do that. I'll be here when you get back. 
So go make peace with your brother. Go, go fix that. Because what's important, what's important are the relationships that we carry forward with us into eternity. Do you understand? It is not the Lamborghini that I have in the garage. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I don't really have a Lamborghini in the garage. It's my worldly self again. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. As we've talked before, heaven is this dimensional coming together. Heaven is around us. We will be here on this earth. Um, so maybe God blesses me with a Lamborghini in the thousand years or something. I don't know. But currently, I don't see myself having one in this life because I would I'd probably have to sell it or something. I might drive it a few times. If I didn't kill myself, then I would probably they sell have it. Like a but lease anyways, <clears throat> where was I at? Do they have a lease program? Yeah, you can like rent it for like a day or a week. Anybody want to help me out? <laughs> I've won a Lamborghini since I was four. <clears throat> but listen, we are to sacrifice. Um... Yes, yes. Maybe the world, somebody does something that the world would say that I would have the absolute right to yell and scream and bitch and moan and so on and so forth, right? Um, as a Christian, though, because I am super concerned with the relationships that I'm carrying forward into the future. Why? Because God's concerned with them. I don't need any other reason. I don't, I don't need anything. God is concerned with us loving him above all else. But then he's willing to take, take a step back as we love our brothers and sisters. Do you understand? He's saying that's what's so important. In order to make your relationship right with him, love his children. That's right, because your brother and sister is also his kid. It's his kid. He's saying, think about this. Think about, I, when my kids fight, it hurts me. Why? Because my kids are at each other's throats. Right? This is God. God looks down and he sees us at each other's throats and it hurts him. He wants us to be a family. He wants us to love one another. He wants us to depend on one another. He's building an army. We need to be able to trust one another. We need to know who's going to carry the water and who's not. We need to know that we can count on one another when times are bad. This is so important, especially in the times we're entering in. We must be able to count on one another when stuff is not well. And that means we've got to be able to be honest. We've got to open our mouths. We've got to be able to say, listen, I am messed up. I fell down. I did this. Yeah, I know it was wrong, but and this is the consequences. Can you please help me? Me and Nicole had a little conversation. I won't go much further. But guess what? I struggle with asking for help. Right? I, I just I just put my nose down and I want to do it. I want to get it done and I, I don't want to ask for help. God has put me in a spot. I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. It's something that I am working through. It's something that, um, yeah, it's a hard lesson. I don't like it. I want to be the boss. <laughs> I really do. Do you understand that? I'm not, I'm not kidding. I really do want to be the boss. That's how I got to the places in my life I got to, the bad spots, because I was the boss. I didn't want anybody else to be. I didn't want to give up that right. The world tells me, that's your right. You're an individual. That's your right. Don't let somebody take your rights. Don't let anybody stand on your rights. Don't let, no, no, I hear you. I hear you. But I would rather stand up for everyone else's rights. Step on mine. God help you. I see you step on somebody's right there and I'm present. I shouldn't say God help you. Because guess what? I'm going to be nice, but I'm going to smile. But I'm going to say something. It's my job to defend those who are weaker. It is my job to lift those who are below me up above me. So it's my job as a man and as a man of God to say, listen, that's not right. That shouldn't be. How about we figure out another way to do this? Oh, and if you really want to hurt my dude, you're going to have to hurt me first. That's a sacrificial life. Injure me. Don't injure them. When we talk about the ministry, what is that? That is like um, throwing yourself right into the fire of sacrificial life. If you're not constantly beating your head against the wall in self-sacrifice and you say that you're a minister of the gospel give me your secrets because I need to know them I don't see any other way to do it to do it right 
There are times where God gives us a deep breath. But if you're caring for a pastor, if you're caring for for a group of, of, of people, um, their their hurts, their needs, their their well being should always constantly be in the forefront of your thoughts and prayers. That's what serving God in this role is. It is looking out for those under your care before yourself. Again, Lisa is in the minister's apprentice program. Uh, Pastor Kane will become the vice president of Black Sheep Church um, probably in a few weeks. Um, I got the paperwork for the 501c3. Um, I'll be filing that this week. Um, once that has been noted, then I can make changes to the board and all that stuff. Um, that'll be adding him, etc. Um, so again, things will keep moving forward. That's not changing. Uh, the goals for Black Sheep Church are not changing. Um, it's just that my face will not be 100% the face you see all the time. It will be the majority of, of the time, but it will not be all the time. Um, there are times I have physical limitations. I need to lay down, right? I, I can't double up on pain pills. I can't do these things. I can't. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, this isn't God broke me so that I cannot stand up for myself. <laughs> The same way I used to. I cannot be the person I used to be when I forced things, when I just bullnosed my way through things, when I made things my way. Um, it is God's way, and He reminds me that a lot nowadays. A lot. Uh, in my weakness, He shows His strength, right? Um. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to read this last part one more time. We're going to go through it, and then I'm going to send it back to Lisa. Okay? Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Um, I strive after living every day as the the king running out to greet you, to make amends, to to make peace. Um, luckily for me, I, I've found my salvation. But it doesn't mean I don't keep running out every single day. It doesn't mean that I stop seeking. It doesn't mean that I, I stop. It means that I look at my shortcomings every day. I get the mirror of God out and I look and I say, okay, what's going on in my home? What's going on with my family? What's going on? Where am I falling short? And I'm honest about it. I can be honest about it. Why? Because I don't have to be sad. I know I'm screwed up. I've dealt with that. I know that's the way it is. So when something comes up, normally it doesn't shock me. Every once in a while it does because I don't see it coming. Somebody else has to point it out. Hey, you're being a, right? And I got to go, and my wife's really good about that. But. <clears throat> I'm broken. You're broken. I love you. I pray that you love Black Sheep Church. I pray that you love the Lord. <sighs> I'll be back on Wednesday. I'll, I'll be back after this for a second. But, okay, whatever. You guys understand what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I apologize. Sir. Wednesday will be better, I promise. Okay, hold on. Oh, never mind. What were we talking about, guys? What kind of coffee you guys like? Cream sugar. I'm gonna stop at Dunkin' later. I can I can deliver. Take two, take two. It's my famous words, take two, because I'm constantly screwing things up. <laughs> I think I can go all the way around the cup. <laughs> 
just the beginning of the song now. <laughs> Take three. Take three. <laughs> I love you, Pastor Sam. Something I need to clarify. Uh, I don't think I did before. Oh, oh, I got you. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I got you. <clears throat> so, uh, you should not... Okay. You should not...
put yourself in the position of being someone's victim over and over and over again. Uh, this was from a little bit ago. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't sacrifice for Jesus. Um, I'm not saying that life will be easy. What I am saying is, if someone is continually abusing you over and over again, God is not saying for you to stay there. God is saying, listen, take what you have to take right now. Do the best you can to heal that relationship. Um, but guess what? If it's a bad thing and it's really bad, I'm not talking about a marriage that's just had a rough spell here, right? We're talking about real abuse type things. Um, you, you are not called to suffer that again and again and again at the hands of the same people. Do you understand me? Um, it's best to stop giving your pearls to pigs and to move along um, so that that doesn't happen to you. Uh, if it does happen, listen, thank God for the lesson that you're learning at that moment. But again, you don't need to re keep putting yourself in that same position over and over again. Do you understand? Be wise about it. You don't have to destroy the relationship. Simply, this isn't good for me. This isn't good for where I'm at. This is not good. So I'm going to step over here. No harm, no foul. I love you, dude. Sorry, etc. Do you understand? That's how that should work. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a, a bad thing on our part. Now listen, guys. This is if we're doing things perfectly, right? We all understand I'm not perfect. Yep. Okay, thank you. Amen. So I just needed to make that clear. Uh, so nobody misunderstood what it was I was saying. <laughs> if you are strong enough and you choose to, more power to you. If you are strong enough and you are willing to demonstrate the love of Christ that deeply, because that is what that is. If you are called, thank you, Nicole. Absolutely. If you are called, if you are called to suffer in that way, that's different, right? Uh, we're going to close with some prayer. Um, Nicole's got some issues going on. We're going to hit that. If you guys need prayer for anything, please put it down here. We're also going to pray for my cousin, Jim Dishman. He's in the... Let's just do this, guys. Join me in prayer. If you have something, put it right down here. When I open my eyes, I want to see it. Okay, so... All right, guys. <clears throat> Father, we come before you tonight. Um, we pray for Nicole, Lord. We pray for the things that she's suffering from. We pray that this resolution comes fast and soon, Father. Um, that is the best outcome possible. Um, that she is brand new and revived and rejuvenated and refreshed after this is all done. That she has a new lease on life, Lord, and a new outlook, a new perspective, and a new love for you, Father. We pray for Lisa that you would raise her up, Lord. That you would you would make her strong in the faith. That you would make her a a defender of the faith. That you would help her to see you more clearly. That you would help her to see her path in your love and your desires for the future of her life on this earth before you return, Lord. <clears throat> None yet. Okay, I'll keep going. Lord, we also pray for Jim Dishman, my cousin. He's in Porter County Hospital, Father. Um, he is suffering from COVID. His lungs have been scarred. Um, it is it is not good from what I understand. We pray that your, your healing hands would be upon him, that you would take the scarring from his lungs, that you would be with the rest of the family, Lord, that you would bring them comfort, knowing that you are present and with them, Father. Any more? No. All right. All right. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for this time together. And please keep us all safe and bring us all back here again Wednesday night at 8 p.m., Father. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, guys. Chins up. Be the light. Do what you can when you can. It's not difficult. Okay? I love you. I'll have a bigger smile and be more peppy on Wednesday. See you at 8 o'clock. Later, guys. Peace out. Oh, sorry. Oh. Lisa Brummett. Please, bow your heads in prayer. Father, we come before you and we ask for Lisa Brummett's uh, son to be taken care of, Lord. You know, you see the problems, you see whatever's going on. Lord, we pray that you would, you would come down, that you would put yourself all over it, that you would show yourself in their lives, that you would make your power manifest, and that you would touch 
and fix and guide and heal all the things that is in Lisa Brummett's head that she needs and those things that she doesn't know she needs for her son, Father. We pray that you'd bring all those things and that you would bless that household, Lord. Uh, uh, Father, we pray for Barbara Galloway's sister. She has stage four lung cancer, and we pray that she is able to start a clinical trial. Um, it's got to be a new drug, huh? Um, I'm sorry to hear that, Barbara. Um, please, Father, be with Barbara and her sister. Um, Lord, this is a, a, a difficult situation. Um, those lung problems are bad right now with the COVID and everything else going on. Uh, be with their family, Lord. Be with Barbara's sister. If it is in your will to reach down and heal this lung cancer, Father, we pray it be done. Um, if it is not your will, Lord, then we pray that you would bring comforting, that you would bring love, that you would bring kindness, that you would bring... We pray that there is no suffering. We pray that everyone will find what they need in the time that they have together. We pray that we all do this, Father, for tomorrow is not guaranteed. Tomorrow will not come for some. It's, it's just the way it is. There are people dying right now, Lord. Let us all take this moment to realize our mortality and um, how, how fragile life really is, Lord. All right. Are we good, guys? All right. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Any more, leave them here. I'll check them in a little while, and I'll send out a little Batmobile beacon. What, what was that called? The bat signal? Yeah, one of those. All right, guys. I'm talking crazy now. Peace out. Love you guys. Chins up. All that good stuff. Bye.